Welcome to Uncommon Solutions, Jake here. Today we're gonna to talk about Mestastic and drones. So I've been using and testing different enclosures for my Mestastic radios and to attach them to DJI drones. Uh, the first one I was using was the Mavic Mini. I now have the Mini uh, 4 Pro, and that one uh, is more, a little more capable. So we're gonna talk why you should consider maybe adding a drone to your, your comms kit. Um, and then what are some of your options? So we're gonna talk the DIY option and the off the shelf option there. So the why really comes into play is it's, yes, a drone is um, expensive or they can be expensive depending on which one you buy, um, but towers are also expensive and you add in the cost of buying one, installing it. If you have the skill sets to install it or you have to hire a team to install it for you and special equipment to do so. Um, they are also fixed. So yes, a large tower is great to have, you know, especially if you do more than just Mestastic, you, you know, maybe you're an amateur radio operator uh, or you have a GRMS setup and you have a home repeater or a mobile at home or a base station at home. They are a good option. So not saying you shouldn't get one of those too if you have one in the budget, but the mobility factor, the portability of a drone, now you have an instant tower that can go up to 400 feet above the ground, um, which you ain't gonna get a tower at your house that's 400 feet. Well, you may, but you're gonna probably have special licensing and stuff like that. And yeah, so, and the cost would be very expensive. So you have a, the portability option to where you can expand your mesh network anywhere you're at within, you know, legal, guidelines, whether you obviously can't operate it if it's a restricted space like near an airport or something like that, but you do have that option. Um, so that is a great feature of a drone. May not be the only reason you wanna buy a drone. They also are, have some other benefits just for fun and then they, they're great, you know, tool, uh, situational awareness tool also. So those are kind of the why behind you might want to consider adding one to your, your comms kit so that you have the ability to expand a local mesh network anywhere you're at. So options, you have the DYI option and the off the shelf option. So DYI highlight today, the Alley Cat print for the DJI Mini 3 and 4. This is a very sleek form fitting design. It's very well thought out. Uh, I really like the fact the way it works. I'll show some other video here, kind of the insides of what it looks like. But on this side, you have the radio. It's running the Rack Mini or the 19003 module. And then on this side, you have a thousand milliamp hour battery, um, which is more than enough power uh, to operate. Your limitations typically are the drone's uh, operating time, which is you know 20, 30 minutes, maybe longer, depending on operating conditions. So I will provide a link to the printables page for Alley Cat. You can find this print there. Um, and then there's also an assembly video there also. So if you print it, you can just watch the Alley Cat's video on that. So kind of the options you have here, uh, you have a vertical antenna option, which I have currently uh, set up. There's a downward antenna option also. I did that one and the antenna occasionally, because I had a whip on it, uh, was uh, occasionally uh, getting picked up by the downward sensors. Uh, on this drone, I'm still new, learning all the features. I know I can turn off the obstacle voids, so I don't have to deal with that warning um, on the screen for uh, that. But then the downward sensors, I couldn't figure out how to deactivate those. You know, let me know in the comments. That would make it to where it goes into a slow mode uh, coming down descending, and it would take forever to get down from like 300 feet. So. I went with a vertical antenna, tested that out, it's working great. Um, so build list, just to give you kind of an idea of what it's gonna cost you and what materials you're gonna need or what items you're gonna need to, to complete this, this build. The Rack Mini Kit, as I talked about, the 19003, 3197 from Rockland, that's as of today. A thousand milliamp hour batteries. I can only find four packs on Amazon for $17.99, so about $4.50 a piece. I don't mind buying more batteries because I'm always having projects I'm building stuff and I'll end up using them eventually. So the wires, uh, the JST2.0 uh, 2 is what's used for the rack boards. Um, I bought a, a pack of those. There's like 10 of both a male and female connector sides with little pigtails off of them. 
uh, for $7.99, you know, so they're like 25, 26 cents a piece for each little wire. Um, like I said, if you're doing projects, it's great to have them. Uh, I, you know, I've had those in the 1.25s also uh, for any sort of my projects. Uh, if you choose a GPS, you can go with the uh, 12500 module from Rack, which is 2697. That one's supposed to be a little more precise and quicker to update. Um, the more budget friendly option is the 12501, and that one's 1597. And then a good antenna you might want to uh, look at is the, the um, Mesh Tac. It's a whip antenna from Rockland. I believe they only sell them in the 1915 megahertz range. So U.S., uh, North America, or if that's your region, if that's what your frequency is allocated for LoRa, um, uh, then that one would work for you. That's twelve ninety-seven. So your total bill is about, not including print costs, if you have your own printer, or if maybe you get a friend, or you you know find someone you can uh, send the file to and have them print it for you and ship it to you. Those can vary as far as what that might cost you. So total bill about I would say. You know, eighty-seven ninety-five, and that's without calculating that. But you're probably ranging between shipping, taxes, or anything like that, between you know eighty-five and a hundred dollars to put one of these together. Which nowadays kind of seems pretty standard for setting up any sort of mestastic uh, node. Uh, so your off-the-shelf option, there's there's a few out there, but I would recommend. I have not tested this one, but just based off their reputation and uh, reading the specs on it is the Spec 5 Copilot. This is ready to go, ships to you. It's a more universal. It may not work with every single quadcopter, but um, it definitely is going to work with a lot of the more, more popular ones. It's uh, $139.99. So if you consider a build cost of around 100 to DYI, you know, maybe a little less, 80, depending on like if you already have some materials on hand and you print yourself that is more uh, affordable than the off the shelf but if you're one of those individuals that just wants to buy something and have it ready to go the copilot would probably be the way to go it's printed in pet g you can also print this one uh, the alley cat one in pet g or uh, pla plus i think is what uh, is recommended um so weight is 63.5 grounds i forgot to get a weight of this one i'll you know, figure it out. <laughs> it, the drone handles it fine, so I actually don't really care that much. The only thing where this does apply, right? So there is FC, FAA regulations. These drones are rated typically to be 250 grams or below to not require a license to operate. Um, if you operate them with some sort of attachment that puts them over that weight, you are supposed to, at least in the US, under FAA uh, rules, you're supposed to have a license so you know i'm not telling you to do anything uh, outside your local regulations depending on where you're located at these uh, regulations or rules may be more restrictive so please be aware of those uh, so the copilot uh, does operate on the esp 32 s3 uh, module now <clears throat> the uh, some people don't like those because they're a little more power hungry. In these applications, they have a 1300 um, hour milliamp hour battery. More than sufficient, your restrictions is gonna be the drone's operating time, 20, 30 minutes. If you're working in a situation where you need to deploy these drones and you have uh, critical communications windows uh, that you need to meet, schedule those windows, have them built into your comms plan and launch the drone during those comm windows, communicate bring them back down, you know, recharge batteries. If you have a three pack of batteries like I do, you know, say 30 minutes of battery, I could operate, um, you know, for an hour and a half, uh, theoretically, uh, in, in one area, or maybe I need to move to get uh, communications with another mesh network. So there's all what you have. So I think it's a really fun feature, a, a really cool option. You really can't unless you get a you know, much larger drone, you couldn't do something like uh, a simplex repeater, you know, with a small HT connected to it, uh, you know, in the amateur radio bands or GRMS bands or something like that um, without a very pretty large drone, which the cost, obviously, the bigger they are, goes up significantly unless you're a 
a builder and you build your own. So, and you're still gonna be paying quite a bit. All in all, I think it's a very fun way to expand, an easy way to expand a mesh network, whether it's just for fun or potentially in, a, in a, an emergency disaster situation where you really need to be able to get in contact with someone that's outside your local network. But that 300 to 400 feet gives you enough elevation to reach out and communicate with them. That would be pretty cool. What do you all think? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, there's gonna be links for all this stuff down below, our social media links, website, and more always in the description section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video if you found this information useful, and stay tuned for more emergency communication solution videos. Thanks for watching.